please start uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen i bring you greetings from uh, india and i thank apasel for giving me the opportunity to present uh, on non cirrhotic portal hypertension in this uh, august forum so what are the causes of portal hypertension the most important cause of portal hypertension as you all know is cirrhosis but apart from cirrhosis there are multiple other causes and which can be uh, labeled as either extra hepatic or intra hepatic the causes uh, in the extra hepatic cause could be post hepatic causes like uh, like but chiari syndrome cardiac failure it could be pre hepatic like portal vein thrombosis uh and then uh, in among the intrahepatic causes there there could be like sinusoidal obstruction syndrome which is post sinusoidal disease or uh, veno occlusive disease at, as it was known among the sinusoidal causes there could be steato hepatitis which can also cause uh, mild portal hypertension infiltrative liver, liver disease and psvd as was alluded to by my previous speaker and granulomatous liver disease cystosomiasis so there are numerous causes of portal hyper non cirrhotic portal hypertension uh, all which uh, are listed in this box and uh, there are many causes and it uh, there has been a decline in uh, non cirrhotic portal hypertension in recent years uh, but again we are recently seeing uh, uh, an increase of uh, this disease so i will talk to you uh, only about few of these diseases like ehpvo but chiari syndrome idiopathic non cirrhotic portal hypertension and sinusoidal obstruction syndrome so coming first to the idiopathic non cirrhotic portal hypertension the first time it was uh, this disease was discovered in calcutta in 1828 when dr william twining uh, in the diseases observations on diseases of the spleen uh in particularly in bengal uh had noticed vascular engorgement of spleen and this was the initial paper which was published in 1828 uh, observations on the diseases of the spleen and it was known as splenic cachexia that time then further many of the workers studied this uh, from germany from france from um, switzerland britain and uh, probably it was one disease but with many names initial name was splenic cachexia then pseudo leukemia anemia splenica idiopathic hypertrophy of the spleen and so on uh, lymphoadenoma splenica banty's disease tropical splenomegaly and fibrocongestive splenomegaly among them the banty's disease uh, name was uh, given by dr guido banty uh, who's a italian physician and pathologist living in florence and he was working on many aspects of the uh, human pathophysiology and he wrote a book uh, del anemia splenica so he wrote entire book on this disease among the current names there are multiple names uh, across various countries non cirrhotic portal hypertension idiopathic portal hypertension primary portal hypertension idiopathic non cirrhotic portal hypertension obliterative portal venopathy and so on so forth so the definition as given by japanese workers is of idiopathic portal hypertension is a disorder of unknown cause characterized by splenomegaly anemia portal hypertension in absence of cirrhosis blood disease parasites occlusion of portal and hepatic vein granulomas congenital hepatic fibrosis and other unknown diseases the definition given by the western workers is disorder with increased portal venous pressure in absence of cirrhosis with patent portal and hepatic vein which is much simpler definition uh the apasel also gave its definition uh, which labeled it as ncpf and iph which was published in 2007 it's a disease of uncertain etiology characterized by periportal fibrosis and involvement of small and medium branches of portal vein resulting in the development of portal hypertension and the liver functions and structure are primarily remain normal in most of the patients so what are the clinical and histological features clinically the portal hypertension is there splenomegaly is there in most patients the liver function remains normal in majority of patients and we have to exclude all known causes of portal hypertension pathologically there are, is fibrous intimal thickening luminal narrowing of the portal vein there is no cirrhosis in histopathology and also no extra hepatic portal vein obstruction and histologically there could be obliterative portal venopathy or hepatoportal sclerosis 
The term in India is known as NCPF in Japan, idiopathic portal hypertension. West call it as idiopathic non-serotic portal hypertension. The diagnostic criteria as given was that clinical signs of portal hypertension should be there. there we should need to exclude cirrhosis on liver biopsy if possible. Exclude other causes of non-serotic portal hypertension like even chronic hepatitis B, autoimmune, various other diseases. And exclude conditions causing non-serotic portal uh, hypertension like congenital liver fibrosis, sarcoidosis. And the portal and hepatic venous system should be patent. Then in 2019, yet another term was given, which is called as portosinusoidal vascular disease, which was alluded to uh, by my previous speaker. And, and they described it as a very novel entity. So this was the vascular alteration in portosinusoidal uh, venous disease, where there could be portal vein stenosis. This is the normal portal tract where this portal vein is large, but it could be stenosed. There could be portal vein herniation from the outer portal tract. It could uh, join two of the portal tract. There could be hypervascularization. And there could be abnormal periportal vessels also. So these is periportal vessels are there. So many vascular things are there. And they mentioned that PSVD can also occur without portal hypertension. So they mentioned it that this is a histopathological finding. The patient may have portal hypertension or may not have portal hypertension. So I would skip PSVD at present because uh, the topic here is on non-serotic portal hypertension. So what are the etiology of non-serotic portal fibrosis or NCPH? So at birth or in early childhood, there is a role of umbilical sepsis, diarrhea, episode abdominal infection that leads to portal pyemia and phlebitis that leads to thrombosis and sclerosis and obstruction of the small and medium size, size portal vein radicals. And this leads to NCPH or NCPF, whatever you can call it. So in the childhood, if the infection was severe, then it leads to occlusion of main portal vein. And this occlusion would become uh, later will be labeled as extra hepatic portal vein obstruction. But if the uh, infection or inflammation of the portal vein radicals was chronic or mild, it leads to chronic antigenemia, micro thrombosis, phlebosclerosis, and that leads to perisinusoidal fibrosis and stimulation of RES system. And this leads to syndrome of NCPF or INC. So both of these leads to pre-sinusoidal hypertension and portal hypertension. So uh, there has been other uh, etiological workup which have been suggested by various workers. For example, some uh, studies have shown that there could be role of heavy uh, metals and chemicals like chronic exposure to vinyl chloride or high, even hypervitaminosis A and 6 mercaptopurine and all this can also lead to periportal fibrosis and then there could be role of immunological or immunogenetic hypothesis due to deranged immune response so that is why it was said that uh, it was more much more common in uh, uh, various western countries but immunological and immunogenetic hypothesis has been not been reported from indian subcontinent then uh, the epidemiology of uh, ncpf for ih in asia uh, differs in Japan. It is uh, the age of diagnosis is mainly middle age. In uh, Iran, it was third to fourth decade. In India, it was 30 year of age uh, from various studies. And possible etiological factors are infections, medications, thrombophilia, HIV, and infections, repeated abdominal infections, as I alluded before, is one of the uh, possible uh, mechanism. And it is much more common in low socioeconomic countries. Uh, uh, and it was a rarity in Western disease. And even in India and uh, Indian subcontinent, it is now declining. And animal studies, as shown by Dr. Sarin's group, that repeated injections of E. coli in the animal model uh, had shown that this uh, similar disease can be infected. And then there are certain medications uh, and uh, HIV uh, treatment as well as HIV disease also cause this uh, disease. So I'll skip all this uh, part. So what is the clinical uh, presentation? This 
it could be if it is a symptomatic disease then it could lead to variceal bleeding in 40 to 80 percent of cases and there could be uh, due to enlarged spleen there could be awareness of the lump in the left upper quadrant and there could be in minority of patients there could be a mild jaundice or a history of jaundice among the clinical signs you would find splenomegaly there could be palpable liver in few patients the ascites is usually transient and especially related to variceal bleeding and anemia is there. So uh, among the investigations, you'll find laboratory features uh, suggestive of hypersplenism in many of these patients. There could be abnormal LFT in uh, some of these patients, but the range is uh, very high. And uh, But the bilirubin is usually less than 5 mg per day. The DNA uh, deranged INR is there in some patients, but usually is less than 2. There could be low albumin in about 17% of patients. When you do endoscopy in these patients, you will find esophageal viruses in majority of these patients and many of them also have gastric viruses at gastropathy and colopathy there uh, we did a study on hvpg and we found that compared to cirrhotics the hvpg in idiopathic non-cirrhotic portal hypertension is much lower uh, however the systemic and hemodynamic derangements are similar to early child acerosis so although the portal pressures are lower but the systemic cardiac output systemic vascular resistance and pulmonary vascular resistance were similar to those of early cirrhotics so what is the natural history of this disease the natural course is remains good ascites is seen in 26 percent but which is loose may mostly transient few patients develop portal vein thrombosis and hepatopulmonary syndrome liver function uh, remained very well preserved in most of these patients the 10-year survival rate is about 86 to 95 percent the development of portal vein thrombosis in ncph is a serious complication because it will increase the portal pressure and there would be increased risk of variceal bleeding and it can lead to progression of liver disease decompensation and increased mortality the actual probability of development of portal vein thrombosis is about nine percent at one year and 42 percent in 10 years so pathologic features i've mentioned that we need to exclude cirrhosis and the grossly liver appears normal and histology i've already covered so this is uh, what is known as phlebosclerosis and uh, 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 put, put, uh, so diagnostic criteria i've already covered now i'll go to the other disease and this uh, the ehpvo or extra hepatic portal have been obstruction which is much more common in children in our part of the uh, continent and the, one of the most important causes is omphalitis or neonatal umbilical sepsis. And there could be other causes like repeated abdominal infection, sepsis, abdominal surgery, trauma, dehydration. And the pathogenesis is that inflammation or omphalitis proceeds uh, proximally from the port to the portal venous system from the umbilical vein and it leads to portal phlebitis and then there's thrombosis is the secondary event so initially there's infection which proceeds from the umbilical vein to the portal vein and then uh, it leads to thrombosis in adults the causes could be both systemic as well as local factors the local factors could be any inflammation in the local organs. For example, there could be acute and chronic pancreatitis, diverticulitis, appendicitis. Many patients of inflammatory bowel disease do develop this syndrome and even abdominal surgery when it leads to uh, sepsis. And the systemic causes can be inherited like any of the increased thrombophilia factors or it can, can be acquired as well as like antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. So many patients have been described. Coming to the next disease that is bud carry syndrome. The recent data suggests that bud carry syndrome is a multifactorial disease with several prothrombotic disorders concur to develop a thrombosis. And up to 35% of patients have multiple prothrombotic disorders, which can be local uh, or it can be systemic. So etiology, uh, myeloproliferative di uh, disease is one of the common etiology, which accounts for about 50% of the cases, especially JAK2 mutation uh, is present in many of these patients due to polycythemia, vera, myelofibrosis. But this uh, kind of disease is more seen in the Western countries. 
the proposed workup for butt carry syndrome as well as ehpvo is that we should do a personal and family history of recurrent uh, spontaneous deep vein thrombosis and if present then we need to refer to hematologist oral contraceptive history should be taken from females jak2 mutations and other uh, inherited uh, mutations need to be checked acquired uh, thrombophilia factors need to be evaluated and uh, in patients with no marked liver dysfunction we can also do protein c protein s and antithrombin plasma levels to summarize ehpvo uh, is a disease of children especially due to uh, repeated umbilical sepsis in adults it can be due to local factors as well as systemic factors the non serotic portal fibrosis or incph uh, is due to possibly due to infections with mild infection of umbilical sepsis and other causes have been implicated heavy metals chemicals immunologic but carry syndrome can be due to inherited factors like factor 5 gene mutation prothrombin gene or acquired like due to myeloproliferative disease and even oral contraceptives and combination this is a busy slide on workup and management of this disease which is available from many of the review articles so i would in the interest of time i'll not go into details of this thank you for your patient hearing